I'm delighted to be here today and I thank you very much for coming. My name is Betsy Diamond Cohen. I am the creator of the Mother Goose on the Loose Early Literacy Program. I was a children's librarian for many, many years and now I travel around the country doing workshops for different library systems and libraries. I have down there a Mother Goose on the Loose playlist and the reason I have it, I have a YouTube channel with different librarians doing nursery rhymes along with activities and I wanted to make that available to you. Mother Goose on the Loose is a program for babies from birth to the age of two. And when you're dealing with babies from birth to the age of two, we want to give them early literacy skills, we want to use materials for them, but kids that age can't sit still or pay attention to long books. So nursery rhymes are actually the most appropriate type of literature to use with very young children because they don't read books. Lots of research was done about the importance of nursery rhymes and how knowing nursery rhymes can actually help lead to being ready for school and being ready to read skills. However, most of that research was done in the 1980s, 1990s, and because there's not new research on it, it's not a hot topic. However, when you think about it, most nursery rhymes are a story. Something happened, like there was Jack and he was nimble, he started here and he jumped over the candlestick. So nursery rhymes teach narrative skills. They're also rich with vocabulary words, like the word nimble. And they have rhyming characters. Like if you see Humpty Dumpty and he's oval in one nursery rhyme book, and you see Humpty Dumpty in another nursery rhyme book, and then you see a different illustration of Humpty Dumpty in a third nursery rhyme book, you recognize that oval shape and you know that that's Humpty Dumpty. When you're learning how to read, you also are supposed to recognize letters. And so this visual literacy, understanding that a picture has, represents a concept and it, can be, and it needs something, is actually also a beginning literacy skill. But nursery rhymes, next please, aren't just good for very young children. They're great for older kids as well. Nursery rhymes are very rich and that rhyming pattern at the end helps the brain hear the words, helps the brain remember the words. And again, studies have shown that kids who enter kindergarten knowing nursery rhymes actually become much better readers and learn to read quicker than kids who don't. So when you do programs, we don't just read one book and another book and another book. We also read one book and then we usually have some kind of activity in between. So what I would like you to do is consider using a nursery rhyme in between. But we don't just recite the nursery rhyme, there are lots of things that we can do with them. We can do activities with them. And the activities are great for building literacy skills, but they're also great for building social and emotional skills as well. And instead of me telling you about everything, I believe the best way to learn is by doing. And we passed out scarves and bells. We're gonna have a quick uh, review of some nursery rhymes and the skills that they build. At the very end, I have some handouts on the table and the handouts have the rhymes, developmental tips to go with them that you can use with parents. They're divided up by the Every Child Ready to Read skills. And if they run out of handouts, um, you can email me or check on my website. I did post a copy of this last night. So let's get on to the next slide. The only thing is, nursery rhymes are just a starting point. You can use a lullaby your grandmother gave you, and we can consider a lot of things to be nursery rhymes. However, some of those old nursery rhymes, they're racist, they're sexist, they could be totally old fashioned. So feel free to change them. There's something about the cadence and the rhymes, like why should we throw out the baby with the bath water? If you have a rhyme that you like but you think it's inappropriate, change the words, but, but use the pattern because the pattern works. And I'm gonna give you some examples of that today also. First one. Two little dicky birds sitting on a cloud. Um, do you know two little black birds? Let's do it. Two little black birds sitting on a hill. One named Jack and the other named Jill. Fly away, Jack. Fly away, Jill. Come back, Jack. Come back, Jill. Okay, that's a rhyme. But my mentor, Barbara Cass Biggs, who was a music educator, she um, adapted the rhyme to make it even richer. And I had bookmarked in here, which I lost, a, pic in a photograph of a bird. So I might show a photograph of a bird to everyone and then say, now we're gonna do a rhyme about two little dicky birds. Every rhyme we're gonna do twice. The first time I do it, the second time you do it with me. But if you know it already, please feel free to do it with me both times. Two little dicky birds sitting on a cloud. One named 
soft, and the other day loud. Fly away soft, fly away loud. Come back soft, come back loud. And as you see, it's so much richer because we're using the word soft in a soft voice and the word loud in a loud voice. Next one. Here's an illustration of a pig. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef. And this little piggy had none. And this little piggy ran wee, 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 all the way home. Now there, we're building narrative skills. We're telling the story of the piggies and we're learning what each little piggy did. However, we can also take our scarves and do that in another way. So I'm gonna take a scarf too. And let's just shoot out our scarf for this little piggy, but when we get to the last one, let's run with it all the way home. Here we go. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef. And this little piggy had none. And this little piggy ran me, 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 all the way home. Now here's a rhyme that you may have heard. It's a clapping rhyme, and it's peas porridge hop. Raise your hand if you've ever eaten peas porridge hop. Nobody! So why would we recite a rhyme about peas porridge hot if nobody even knows what it is? However, raise your hand if you've ever eaten pizza and had pizza that's been lying in the box and is cold and yucky. Okay, and so we take that lovely rhyme pattern and we change the word. So do it with me. Pizza, pizza hot. Pizza, pizza cold. Pizza, pizza in the box nine days old. Some like it hot, some like it cold, some like it in the box, nine days old. Yuck! <laughs> Again, pizza, pizza hot, pizza, pizza cold, pizza, pizza in the box, nine days old. Some like it hot, some like it cold, some like it in the box, nine days old. Yuck! And you can see how that would fit in perfectly between reading two books together and we're also introducing those nursery rhymes to the kids. Now, we're going to do singing. And ring, 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 ring. Shh. Ring, 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 ring. Shh. Ring, 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 ring. Shh. Ring, 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 ring. Ring, 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 ring. Shh. Ring, 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 ring. Shh. Ring, 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 ring. Ring, 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 ring. There, we're getting the child practice of paying attention. I didn't tell you what to do, and I don't tell the kids what to do, but they automatically follow along, and it forces them to pay attention and to follow directions. That's called self-regulation, and it's a very important school readiness skill. Plus, they're learning about the word ring. Another way to sing in your story times is simply taking books that are made, meant for singing along. So for instance, Little White Duck over here with illustrations by John Paley. There's a little white duck sitting in the water, a little white duck doing what he order. He took a bite of the lily pad. He flapped his wings and he said, I'm glad that I'm a little white duck sitting in the water. What does he say? Quack. Quack, quack. And what do kids need to know when they enter kindergarten? They're supposed to know the names of the animals and the sounds that the animals make. So here I'm introducing them to books in a joyful way, and I'm also helping them learn about the animals. There's another way that you can use books with very young children. And this is really great when you have parents who are in your story time who are not English speakers or who might be illiterate. They're not used to using books with their kids, but if you use the book without reading it by simply playing with it or singing with it, you're modeling for them how to do it. The way is, again, to make a song about the pictures. I went to visit the farm one day. I saw a pig along the way. And what do you think the pig did say? Oink, oink, oink. oink. I went to visit the farm one day. I saw a duck along the way. And what do you think the duck did say? Quack, quack, quack. 
So with very young children, we would sing the whole thing ourselves. With preschoolers, we would let them fill in the blanks. And again, it's just a joyous way to introduce playing with books and singing. Here, we're gonna use our imaginations and pretend that this is a basket, okay? A tis, get a task, get a brown, orange, and green basket. I wrote a letter to my love, and on the way I lost it. I lost it, I lost it, and on the way I lost it. I wrote a letter to my love, and on the way I lost it. A typical song is meant a letter that you write, and you might hand out an envelope. But if you want to introduce very young kids to reading, you might get letters, and you can use these letters because also vocabulary, a letter could mean an envelope, but it could also mean a letter. So now I've handed it out to everyone. Now we're going to invite each child one at a time to come back and put the lost letter back in the basket. And when they do, we're going to give them a big round of applause for a job well done. So I'm not even going to ask you to raise hands. Just come on up and put your, put your letters back in the basket. Yay! Short example. 
example of how you can use nursery rhymes in your programs to integrate the practices of every child ready to read and it, they don't need to be limited to very young children, they can be used for all children. So, oh, next one please. So our job as children's librarians is not just to do programs for the children, but it's also to recognize that parents are the child's best teacher. So while we do the nursery rhymes, we also want to give those developmental tips and say to the parents, so that's why you should recite these rhymes and do the activities with your child at home. And for that purpose, I do have a handout over there um, with these rhymes that I've done with you today and with the developmental tips. It's divided by the practices for every child ready to read. And to end, we want to encourage everyone, we can use nursery rhymes. This is a beautiful poster that was designed by House Committee and it's available for free download. So if you don't know about it already, know about it and feel free to download it. Thank you very much everyone. I hope you are leaving with some good ideas.